Hi, I am Paul Lucassen, and in this video I will explain how to modify a shape map for use in Power BI. Recently a customer contacted me about a problem they encountered with one of their shape maps. The map represents municipalities in the Netherlands, and recently a few of these have been joined together to form one. As a result, the shape map is no longer correct and needs fixing. Although this is a Power BI related video, nevertheless I will show you the use of GIS software to address this issue. We need to correct the boundaries of the shapes, and I will demonstrate the use of special software to do this. Commercial GIS software packages, such as Maptitude or ArcGIS, can do this type of processing. Since many of you will not be interested in purchasing GIS software, in this case I am using free software named QGIS, which is outstanding. Download QGIS from this website. Select the most stable version. We are not going to do anything fancy, so a matured version is just fine. At first sight, the user interface is intimidating, but no worries, we only need a few options. QGIS starts with a blank screen, but for reference you can add a background map using plugins. We can add OpenStreetMap so we have an accurate base map. You can find the plugins here under Manage and Install Plugins. You can see that I have installed several plugins. The ones that you need, the one that you need to install is Quick Map Services. If you then go to Web, Quick Map Services, OpenStreetMap, Standard, you will get a map like this, which can serve as a background map. I will hide it again because we do not need it in this case, but if you do, Sometimes it comes in handy for reference, this is how. Now that we have a canvas, we can start preparing the shape. Find the shape file in the browser window on the left and drag it onto the white space. The shape map will show. I always create a duplicate layer by right clicking the layer, duplicate layer, just for safety. If you mess up, you can start over. Right click the layer and open the attribute table. This table represents all the data in the shape file and this table will also become a DBF file that we will later convert in Excel and use in Power BI. We need to join three municipalities to become one, so we select the three shapes either by control clicking on the map or by selecting them in the table. Select features, control click, select one, two, and three. Once the, these are selected, go to vector in the ribbon, select geoprocessing tools, and then click dissolve. This will remove the inner borders of the three municipalities to become one big shape. Selected features only, run, close. As you can tell, our shape is now one big shape. And we now have two layers for processing. This solved, which is the part that we took out. As you can see, this is just those three shapes merged into one and we have the uh, original layer on, on top. In the attribute table of the original layer, we will now remove the three selected shapes. I happen to know the names, so I'm selecting this one, this one, and This one, 
click the pencil to allow editing. Click on the bin and they are now deselected. To show this, I hide the dissolved part and you can see the void. Save the table. In the attribute table of the dissolved layer, we can change the name to the desired one. Let's call it repaired. Togo. Now we need to fill the void in the original layer with the dissolved layer. On the right side we have our processing toolbox. Type merge. And select the merge vector layers. A window pops up and we can select the two layers Our shape has been repaired and we will show as a new layer merged. I can unselect these and now we have a repaired shape. Right click this layer, select export and save it as a shape file. This is important, make sure you select shape file. We'll give it a name. We are done in Cube GIS. Now we need to convert this shape file to a topo JSON file for use in the shape map visual in Power BI. Go to the Map Shaper website and load your shape files. Make sure to include all files. We need to make a few modifications. First, we click Import. The shapefile will now open in MapShaper. Click Console. You see a window on the left and type Info. The most important part of this information is the CRS, the reference system, which is the projection of the map. This should be WGS84. If this is not the case, type project 84 and enter type clear type info again and you will then find that the projection has changed given that your projection was different from the WGS 84 so your projection is now correctly for uh, use in Power BI since we have used QGIS to modify the attributes table, we do not need further editing. In case you do, you can use the icons top right here to allow for a feature display. Click on it, select an area on the map and the attributes will show and may be edited. If you edit, make sure that the names for the location on the map 
correspond with the location names in your data set. Next thing we do is we click the simplify button. This will help to reduce the file size of the shape by changing or stretching the contours of the shapes, which reduces rendering time. Select a method, click apply. In the settings pane, you can drag the slider. And if I do it all the way, you can see that the shapes are no longer distinguishable. And then we slightly increase it. And usually I take something like 10%. And these shapes are okay for use. So if you're happy, click export, select topojson, export the file, and let's save it on our uh, desktop repaired and for safety's sake I add topo to it we don't need map shaper anymore so we can close this go to Excel open the DBF file The name in this table corresponds with the names in the map, so they need to match. We open it and we save it. Done. Close Excel. In Power BI, we have imported the table repaired. We have the shape map visual, and we have added the name of the municipality. Under the formatting pane shape, we have our repaired topo JSON file. And now we can select this new shape and we can see this is the repaired one. I realize this is quite a step from Power BI, but it is a great skill to be able to create or modify your own geographical shapes and display them. In this use case, we have looked at administrative boundaries. Say that you would like to display factories or buildings at their geographical position on a map. With an Excel table with three or more pairs of latitudes and longitudes, you create geographical shapes that can be placed on the map and make them selectable objects. Endless possibilities. Well, this is the end of this demo. Hope you like it and good luck with it. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.